This is it, boys. Let's make it happen. Only if you've been living under a rock might you have missed the reality series Wicked Tuna, which has amassed an impressive following over its 11-season run. Initially released in 2012, the show follows a group of commercial fishermen in Gloucester, Massachusetts, and their journey as they make a living by fishing the highly coveted bluefin tuna. The fishers, divided into teams, compete in hilarious and captivating battles to see who can get the most profit from catching the fish. Besides the thrilling elements of competition, the show additionally illuminates some of the crucial issues surrounding the fate of the endangered bluefin tuna that have put these species on the list of endangered fishes. Given its popularity, it doesn't surprise that the show spawned a spin-off series entitled Wicked Tuna Outer Banks. As happens with any show since launching the series, it's included numerous cast members who have exited the show for various reasons. The current cast numbers nine members, TJ Ott, Dave Marciano, Dave Carrero, Tyler McLaughlin, Paul Herbert, Bob Cook, Spurge Krasowski, Jack Patrician, and Sandro Maniacci. Each cast member gets pay, which is heavily dependent on their experience in the industry. Initially, each boat received between $2,000 and $3,000 per episode. However, as the show's popularity grew, so did the members' paychecks. And over time, the amount rose to $10,000 per episode, plus the acquired revenues from the fish they caught. As one of the most expensive and sought after fish, bluefin tuna can cost between $20 and $40 per pound, about half a kilo. However, the price also depends on the location where it was caught, the season, and the supply. It can fluctuate up to $200 per pound. So now, to introduce the current main cast and their net worth, Timothy James Ott is known as TJ, the captain of the fishing boat Hot Tuna, reportedly receives $100,000 per episode, which is very high compared to the other cast members' pay. Then, coming from a family rooted in the fishing industry, he has more than 30 years of experience under his belt. He caught his first bluefin tuna at the age of 12 and took over the family business when he was just 20. TJ joined the show's cast in the third season, and has been a regular ever since. According to reports, his net worth as of 2022 is estimated at over $500,000. One of the original cast members of the show, Dave Marciano, has been on Wicked Tuna since its launch in 2012. The captain of hard merchandise, Dave, a skilled fisherman, earns around $83,000 per episode. In addition to his high salary, he is also one of the most popular captains and is often described as real and down-to-earth. As a skillful and versatile individual who has spent more than four decades navigating the fishing industry, Dave has amassed stupendous experience and rightfully has the biggest net worth of all cast members, $600,000. Interestingly, he stepped into the business driven by zeal for tuna. Dave bought a fishing license, a ship, and launched a business. Dave Carraro is also one of the original cast members who, unlike Dave Marciano, has been featured in every season of the show. According to the latest reports, he also makes around $83,000 per episode. Dave developed an interest in fishing at a very young age and has harbored love and dedication for it ever since. After completing his education, he launched a career in the industry, emerging as an experienced tuna fisher with an envious reputation which eventually landed him a spot in the reality TV series. Dave, with his fishing firm and as a commercial pilot, is one of the popular members due to his benevolent attitude and competitive nature. Tyler McLaughlin, who joined the show in the third season, is making around $10,000 per episode. He rose to popularity for his incredible skills and excellent debut season, which he won by reeling in a tuna worth over $100,000. Before joining Wicked Tuna, Tyler competed at the 75-boat tournament in Maine, making a splash and becoming known for his vigor and high ambition. He's attributed his skill and abilities to years of training under several seasoned fishers. Besides his role in the show and fishing business, he is also a businessman with his quality apparel entitled Pinwheel Gate. His estimated net worth is in the range of $400,000. Paul Herbert, who has starred in the show 
since just the third season, earns around $10,000 per episode. He's a third generation fisherman who took on the craft from his father, developing a love for it from a young age. He reportedly caught a huge bluefin tuna, 1,100 pound heavy, about 500 kilos, when he was just eight years old. This is not his only notable achievement though. He's the holder of the record catch of a giant mako shark, weighing over 1,530 pounds, almost 700 kilograms. His remarkable feat was featured in the 1997 edition of the Old Colony Memorial newspaper. Paul previously worked with fvtuna.com. When it comes to his net worth, he doesn't fall much short compared to the other members. His net worth is in the range of $400,000. Bob Cook is a U.S. Coast Guard charter boat licensed captain who earns around $10,000 per episode. Similar to other captains, the Beverly native has a background in the fishing industry and has been active for more than two decades in the Northeast waters, honing his craft and experience. He has acquired knowledge in onshore and offshore lobstering and commercial sword fishing. In addition to his fishing business and spot on the series, Bob co-owns a pizzeria entitled Little Italy in Beverly Hills. So all up, his estimated net worth is over $350,000. Spurge Krasowski is one of the members who joined the tuna hunt in the 10th season. He makes around $10,000 per episode. A skilled fisherman, he has spent more than 40 years in the industry and shares a true passion for fishing. Also a bit of a joker, 76 years old Spurge calls his boat a 43 foot rocking chair saying, instead of being in a rocking chair, I got a 43 foot rocking chair. During his debut performance on the show, Spurge and his protege Ryan Fletcher made a splash, reeling in a 304 pound tuna worth around $2,000. He followed this success with another. In the third episode, he caught a 166 pound tuna. As of 2022, his estimated net worth is over $350,000. Jack Patrician, introduced in the 10th season, receives $10,000 per episode. He's one of the newest members and not much information is known about him and his life. While on the show, he disclosed that he had been in the industry for over 10 years and his boat specialized in striped bass and giant bluefin tuna. His wealth is in the range of $300,000. Sandro Maniachi's pay is also in the range of $10,000 per episode. Similar to other members, Sandro developed an interest in fishing when he was just a child. Hailing from Gloucester, he landed his lucky break when Dave Carraro needed a partner. So Sandro joined him on a tuna hunt and the rest, as they say, is history. With 10 years of experience in the industry, Sandro gives fishing enthusiasts a thrill and action-packed adventure. His estimated net worth is in the range of $300,000. Even though the show has amassed a large fan base and continues to draw solid ratings, it's attracted some controversy and criticism for various reasons over the years. It attracted a backlash for exaggerating tuna prices, which according to some individuals in the industry are not realistic and do not represent the actual value. While most reality shows are centered on glamorizing the job that has been showcased, it's logical to assume that many viewers might try to do the same. The show portrays bluefin tuna fishing as a highly lucrative business in which one can earn up to $40 per pound or half kilo. And considering that bluefin tuna weighs between 480 to 550 pounds, that is a high income. However, some fishermen claim that bluefin tuna could be bought for only $6 per pound. While most of us believe that celebrities are exempt from mundane repercussions and consequences, Paul Herbert showed that this isn't always the case. In fact, as a public person and TV star, it was unlikely that the government wouldn't track his earnings. In June 2018, he was sentenced to four years on probation with a $5,000 fine and ordered to pay over $53,000 in restitution for Social Security and Medicaid fraud after pleading guilty to two counts of benefit fraud. Reportedly, he was sued after he failed to amend his status as a person unfit to work due to a disability. Instead, he continued to star in the show, working on his ship and displaying his skills. 
which involves a lot of physical activity when it comes to fishing. The original indictment claimed that he collected disability benefits from 2010 to 2012 of over $34,000 after swearing under oath that he was completely disabled. Additionally, it contained a letter of his statements which alleged that he had lived on $25, while his monthly income was in the range of $50, which included the food stamps. Although Paul landed himself in hot water with this benefits fraud, it didn't discredit his role or place in the show, and he continued to star in it, in addition to avoiding jail time. Watching the episodes from a cozy, safe, and dry sofa and following the adventures of its cast is very entertaining and exciting. However, Despite the speciously undemanding portrayal of this laborious business, working on the vessel is quite hazardous. Although luckily there hasn't been a fatal accident on the show, some cast members have died behind the camera due to unfortunate circumstances. One of the show's favorites, Nicholas Fudge, who worked with Captain Tyler McLaughlin of Pinwheel, died in July 2015. He was found by his friends at his residence unresponsive and following emergency respondent's arrival, pronounced dead. Nicholas's cause of death remained a mystery for several years, inviting rumors and controversy. Later, it was announced that he suffered from decompression sickness, a medical condition caused by changed barometric pressure. In simple words, it is a type of injury that happens when there is a rapid decrease in pressure around the body, and often occurs to scuba or deep sea divers. Another unlucky member was William Hathaway, the star of Wicked Tuna Outer Banks, who passed away after being involved in a fatal car crash that landed him in a ditch. He called his wife and talked to her after the accident, explaining the situation, but unfortunately, despite him sounding okay on the phone, he was pronounced dead on arrival at hospital. Unfortunately, Fudge and Williams are not the only cast members who have met an early end. In September 2015, Another cast member, Adam Mosner, who worked under McLaughlin, passed away from a fentanyl overdose in Portsmouth, after which his parents spoke about the destructiveness and devastating effects of opioid use. While on the show, Adam proved to be a valuable asset to the pinwheel vessel, coming out on top in the second season, so many viewers assumed that his journey was only getting started. But sadly, his ride did not last long. As a reality series with a competition element, everybody wants to know who holds the most wins since launching the series. That's Dave Carraro of the FVTuna.com. Even though fishing tuna is his bread and butter, it's evident that Dave Carraro enjoys the pleasure of fishing as much as the joy of winning. So far, he's taken the season's winner title five times in the first, third, fifth, sixth, and eighth season. In second place in terms of winning, is Tyler McLaughlin, right behind Dave Carrara with two wins, taking the title in the second and seventh season. Three other captains, TJ Ott, Dave Marciano, and Paul Herbert have each won a single season. The 11th season has kicked off recently, on 27 February 2022, with a 90-minute episode entitled Back on the Hunt on National Geographic. All those who missed the adventures of our beloved captains can have the pleasure of watching this and seasons 1 to 10 on the streaming platform Disney+. Plus. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.